Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Hi, welcome to our Sunday afternoon RCF live stream. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you. We are going through Pastor Walter's manual on the Jesus series, Volume 1. We started talking about uh, last week... Let me read the title so I don't. Obtaining Christ's victory over sin and death. We talked about his burial, or his death and his burial. This week we're going to talk about his resurrection and ascension. We have the author here oh. with us today. What a treat. <laughs> so we get a more in-depth look into his manual, into his revelations that yeah. he received from the Lord. If I know anything about Pastor Walter, he would not like that I just gave him credit. He yeah, you still do. <laughs> <laughs> we just have such a high respect for you. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll start with prayer. <laughs> yes. Would you like me to pray, sir? Someone's got to. <laughs> thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation from your word that helps us, that uh, that teaches us, develops us, and guides us, leads us, Father God. We just uh, give you all the glory and all the honor, and we just recognize all the work that you've done mm-hmm. uh, through Pastor Walter for us and we just give you the glory and the honor in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. What mm-hmm. page are you on? 16. We're on page 60. Okay. Right there. So we're talking about the resurrection. Resurrection is the victory over death where we are raised with him. It is actually where the benefits of victory are experienced. The resurrection and ascension were simultaneous events. Resurrection means to be raised out of the sphere of the dead. Ascension holds the idea of someone ascending or moving up. Within the context of the resurrection, sin is defeated. It has lost its power and influence over the believer. That's powerful. Amen. This is where we're justified and proclaimed righteous, having gained uh, and, and have gained mastery over the devil. I really liked what Pastor Walter said this morning about uh, condemnation. If you're living in a sense of condemnation, then you're not living out of the revelation how of, righteousness. You, of righteousness and being in right standing with mm-hmm. God, I think yeah. is how you said it. And uh, when you're living out of the revelation of being in right standing with God, that's how you can access God. And that's how God can give you all the benefits of your salvation. Amen. Amen. Um, so this is also where believing in Jesus and the finished work of the cross is equivalent or counted as righteousness where we get our righteousness. (laughs) Um, So we're going to read Romans chapter 4 verses 24 through 25. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And then Romans 5 17 or did you want to add anything about that? No. Okay Romans 5 17 through 19. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of the one of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are the righteousness of God. I like how in last week you mentioned um, that might be isn't in reference to God's ability right. um, to, to make us righteous but in our ability to believe mm-hmm. and to receive and right. to receive right so justification and resurrection are events that operate simultaneously capturing our legal rights in christ i uh i just want to real quick I, I i know i said it. i really liked what you said this morning about um condemnation mm-hmm. and living in a sense of condemnation because that was an area that i struggled with um majorly it was one of the biggest hindrances that i experienced um, when I started coming to church and mm-hmm. I couldn't get past my own mistakes, my own um, feelings of inadequacy and you know not being good enough, not being this, that or whatever and it really hindered me in being able to to, to experience the benefits of, of living in righteousness with mm-hmm. God. Um, and so I don't know did you want to <laughs> add anything about that? Well uh, 
this morning we were talking about um, uh, that we were created in righteousness and true holiness, so it's part of our makeup, it's part of our construction as new creation beings or people, um, and that the best way to live void of condemnation is to purposing in our lives to live right before God. And when you say that, make that comment, uh, to purposely live void of, 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 uh, of condemnation. We, we purposely live live in a way that uh, to avoid mistakes it doesn't mean you won't be that you won't make mistakes mm -hmm. it just means that you purpose not to make mistakes yeah. and once you purpose not to make mistakes and you have a revelation of being right before God and the blessings that come to those that are right before God and then the revelation of the blood uh, the history of the blood is important because it kind of reveals every area that the blood touches. And the first area that the blood touches is the covenant. Mm -hmm. We are in covenant with God, which is so important because it's God's solemn oath to protect us mm -hmm. as long as we remain in covenant now. Because Jesus broke covenant for us on our behalf, mm -hmm. then our mistakes were, uh, were given to him and he became sin mm -hmm. so that we might become his righteousness. Amen. And, and uh, that is, so that means that God will always be dedicated uh, by a solemn oath to protect us and to keep us as long as we apply our faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like how you said this is where we're just, in his resurrection, we're justified, proclaimed righteous, and have gained mastery over the devil's sickness, disease, and poverty. So in his resurrection. In his resurrection, about, right. So justification simply means the pro pronunciation or declaration, did I read that word right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of righteousness. Justification can be seen as the announcement of someone being found without guilt and without fault, resulting in being right before God. And of course, you go into the Greek mind, in the Greek mind it paints the picture of someone in a courtroom having been tried and having no evidence to link them to the crime. I like watching sometimes, not all the time, I'll like, I do like, studying some true crime documentaries and things mm -hmm. like that. Now, these people are usually guilty <laughs> in <Yeah>. the true <laughs> crime documentary. <laughs> when they're on trial, they're usually guilty, and then there's evidence to prove their guilt. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you're talking about because of what Jesus did, mm -hmm. there's no evidence of our guilt. And so mm -hmm. the judge will then proclaim the person's innocence. That proclamation is called justification, which resulted in being right before the judge and the court. By faith in the completed work of the cross, specifically the resurrection, we are justified and proclaimed righteous. This is extremely important. I love that. I love that picture, mm -hmm. how you're standing before a judge, mm -hmm. which would be God, right? And so, so you know, the, the enemy, the devil, he's, he's our... He's a prosecutor. He's the prosecutor trying uh -huh. to say, you're guilty <laughs> of this. You did this, this, and that. And, God, and, and you know, Jesus is standing there with his blood saying mm -hmm. they're innocent. The defense attorney. The defense attorney. <laughs> he's saying they're innocent. And he presents his blood and we're justified mm -hmm. as if we've never sinned. Yeah, giving evidence to why we're not guilty. I love that picture. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add anything? No, I mm -hmm. think you said it well. Okay, so he has no legal right. The enemy of our faith... Okay, I've missed a spot. The enemy of our faith only has the legal right to operate within the sphere of the unsaved or fallen humanity. Mm -hmm. That's because they don't have Jesus mm -hmm. as their justifier. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, even even the devil will also, uh, and not just the devil, but the sin nature will be activated in this, in this area uh, where uh, there's a lack of revelation of who you really are and mm -hmm. how you, you know, because you are the righteousness of God right. in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's who you really are. And uh, as I said this morning, there is a positional truth, who we are in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But the B Bible also reveals to us that there's a, an experiential truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is that we actually experience what we've been created to be. Right, that's good. You know, so if you're created to be righteous, then you just, y y your motivation, your, your convictions, your aspirations, are all geared towards living right before God. Mm -hmm. It's just who you are. You know, it's just that driving force in you. I'm going to live right before God. 
and then you experience it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that is, uh, when Christians lack that, that's where they need that revelation in this particular segment that we're talking about mm-hmm. of, of righteousness. Right, that's good. I like how you said it opens the door, like that's how that, like, so the enemy has no legal right to us. No. But you can open the door through a lack of revelation of your righteousness mm-hmm. in Christ. He's a thief. Right. I've never known a thief to obey the law. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> Have you? No, no. No. Not at all. That's the, you know, the they'll break into your house. They'll steal if yeah. you if you don't have the right things in place. Right. And they get away with it if you don't have the right things in place. Right. So, uh, obviously, today we have cameras and alarms mm-hmm. and all kinds of things that alert us to people doing wrong, mm-hmm. stealing or killing or destroying or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have these this internal compass within yeah, us called your, called your conscience that serves as as that warning, uh, you know, that and 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 the convictions of your faith that has taken the word of God and said the Bible says I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, so I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It begins as a as a as a positional truth. Mm-hmm. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, mm-hmm. and it ends with an experiential truth. Mm-hmm. Right. I now experience that I am that that I now I'm now experiencing living right before God. Right, that's good. I like that. So the enemy has no legal right or access to the believer. However, the Christian must understand that the enemy of our faith is depicted as a thief who has come to steal, <laughs> kill, and destroy. His goal is to rob us of everything God has provided for us by whatever means possible. Like you said, he can get mm-hmm. through t- he can get through the door of your lack of revelation mm-hmm. or your sin nature. If right. you're activating your sin nature, he go- you've opened the door to him. So yet, for those that are redeemed and know their rights through the work of the cross and what's been obtained for them through the suffering of Christ and his resurrection, which is what we're talking about, they have obtained a clear view of their authority in Christ and can rule and reign with Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Let us not forget that the resurrection puts emphasis on justification that is being proclaimed righteous. We are proclaimed righteous. I think, like I said, that's one of the biggest Mm -hmm. areas that I had to overcome. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people struggle with condemnation Mm -hmm. because the enemy wants to keep you there and keep you from overcoming. Mm -hmm. The, the, The more appropriate view... sin nature mm-hmm. uh, we don't have a sin nature anymore but it doesn't mean that that uh, we don't resurrect that nature in mm-hmm. our lives by yielding to the self nature mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. uh, so the self nature is the sin nature it's sin is very selfish yes. uh, it's more it's it's all geared towards why can't I do this mm-hmm. and and uh, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. Then the justification sets in, like, mm-hmm. and then you give reasons for why you're disobeying God, right. mm-hmm. or why you've acted. Well, I just don't feel like in trying to somehow justify that your intentions were okay, therefore your actions are permissible. Well, that doesn't work. Disobedience is disobedience. Mm-hmm. You know, so we don't, you know, but you see a lot of that because because of this concept of the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. You know, we, we always have to be aware of that. Uh, and if we would just look at the Word of God and just say, well, you know, stealing is not right. There's no way I can rightfully in my heart justify it. Yeah. I could say that it's okay because I was hungry. Mm. <laughs> so I can't, you know, I, I can say that I stole it because I seen this person needed food and so I figured it'd be okay. I, no, you, you can't do that. Um, you know, right. and, and it sounds good, but it's not, it's still not accurate. Mm-hmm, right. I mean, stealing is stealing, right. you know, and, um, but anyways. The idea is is that this revelation of righteousness, mm-hmm. um, that 
uh, because because Christ was resurrected, we were resurrected with him. Mm -hmm. um, sin has been defeated. Mm -hmm. So the resurrection is the ultimate defeat of sin's consequence mm -hmm. from the dead, right? right? So dead, no access to God, uh, <clears throat> no relationship with God, it's ended. Uh, resurrection restored being brought back to life to God uh, all within the context of the resurrection of Jesus Christ he wasn't just brought back to life his 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 person was accepted back to God as if nothing ever went wrong uh -huh. right. you know he was the first son as the scripture says that was res that was resurrected spiritually from the dead mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't the first person that was ever resurrected but the first one that was spiritually resurrected so anyways I, I go too far so no, let's, it's good. let's just continue we're grateful so again we are proclaimed righteous why is that so important again Satan does not have any legal right to the righteous that's mm -hmm. why it's so important uh, Psalms 512 for thou Lord will bless the righteous with favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield so the righteous are blessed and they are surrounded with favor that acts as a shield. This simply means that all of their efforts are assured to be prosperous. Amen. The question arises, do we know what it means to be righteous and the many but blessings of favor that surround us because of it? Um, let's read seven, what, Psalm 7, 9. <laughs> Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just for the righteous. God trieth the hearts and reigns. So, remember the word justification? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? To be justified just as if you've never sinned, proclaimed righteous. To be proclaimed righteous. So, right. it's like if you're in a courtroom and yeah. the judge says, not guilty, mm -hmm. that means I'm free. <laughs> right. I don't have to go to jail. Mm -hmm. I don't have to pay the consequence of what I've been accused of, mm -hmm. which was sin. Right. Yeah, right. Amen. So the justified are established in God, which means there's no end to the just. I will read Psalms 34, 15, 17, and 19. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Father oh, God, in Jesus' name, isn't that great? Wow. Yeah. See, the benefits of of the righteous, the Lord's ears are always open to their cry. Mm -hmm. The Lord promises to deliver them out of all their troubles. His delivering power is always employed when it comes to the righteous. That's why it's important not to let the devil rob from your revelation of being the righteous mm -hmm. That's right. through condemnation. That's right. We're yeah. going back to this morning, aren't we? We are. It's good. <laughs> Isn't that funny how it's kind of mirroring this teaching? Yeah. It really is. It's interesting. They, they weren't intended to be that way. Right. What, 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 well, I know that, that, like, again, like I said, I've struggled with that in the past. So if I've struggled with that, I know that the devil's going to mm -hmm. try and get someone else to struggle with that, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So the unrighteous do not have these promises. Right. These are but a few of the promises to the righteous. God went through great lengths to establish his people in righteousness. It was all a part of a master design that ensured our redemption. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Powerful and exciting. We must never allow anyone to downplay the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is crucial to our redemption. And now we're going to talk about his ascension. And I had some questions this morning about ascension, and Pastor spent some time this afternoon mm -hmm. studying to clear it up for me, so we'll probably mm -hmm. hear a lot about that. Okay. Uh, so this is the event that leads to our Lord's exaltation, glorification, and priestly ministry. Uh, there was a delay between these three, three events, yet they eventually all ended with Jesus seated at the right hand of our Heavenly Father. One needs to just study the timeline of these events to see this. It's um, Pastor Walter had done a, a, an extensive study of this in Volume 2 mm -hmm. of the Jesus series. Do you have uh, your Bible with you? Mm -hmm. Here, why don't you look up Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, I believe. No, is it 6 or 8? I don't know. I, I'll, uh, Ephesians chapter 4. <laughs> Go ahead and read that while we, so we can talk a little bit about ascension. Uh, which verse is it? Six? See what 8 says. Eight. 
Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Okay, go up to verse 6 and start there. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he, Go ahead. he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Okay. This passage of scripture is obviously dealing with the ministry gifts that God gives the church. But it captures this idea of ascension and dissension, mm -hmm. or dissension and as uh, ascension. Mm -hmm. So he first had to descend. That mm -hmm. means that's in reference to his death. Right. Yeah. Okay. So in between this, it doesn't really talk about his resurrection. It just goes from his uh, descension to his ascension. Mm -hmm. So it bypasses a little bit of things in there. But it is laying out some kind of a of a of a t t uh, vague timeline mm -hmm. that he first ascend or, or descend and then he, he eventually ascends. Now when he talks about ascending, uh, the scriptures point out to a couple of major events with the ascension. Uh, and that is, first of all, that he ascends up with his blood. Uh, and, and second of all, well first of all I guess I should say, is that the saints that he ministered to in prison, as we talked about I think it was last week, mm -hmm. they, they're, they're caught up with him. He mm -hmm. takes them to heaven with him. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it doesn't really give the timeline for that. Uh, it just mentions it. He ascended, mm -hmm. descended. It doesn't really say what came first or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you get over into other portions of scripture, you'll see that uh, uh, an, an ascension was uh, was uh, when he was when he went up uh, to heaven mm -hmm. and and he began to function as a priest, as a high priest. Mm -hmm. All of that had to do with his raising up. Mm -hmm. It does. So it goes from it go, to to go from ascension. It should go in in a perfect timeline. It would go. He was raised up to heaven, or he ascended. He was raised up to heaven. He was seated at the right hand of God. He took on his priestly ministry. Mm -hmm. That would be the proper timeline. Which is all is also his exaltation, because once he reaches heaven and he's seated right hand, right hand of God, he's been exalted mm -hmm. to his uh, former place. Right. That's where he started. That's where he'll end. He'll be seated at the right, hand. and that's a place of majesty, of power, and authority. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, so uh, I hope I I covered that a little bit, but it's kind of this is these are some of the hardest manuals I thought uh, to write because. There's so much in between, right. and there's so much that is just mentioned mm -hmm. in mentioning. Uh, like when you talk about, uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but when you read uh, Genesis chapter 1, it starts talking about God's creation, uh, and, and then uh, it makes all these things about God created man, God created woman, talks all about that, and then, and then, uh, then it starts talking about individually how we created woman for what purpose was she created for so it kind of just like starts giving more detail as to how man was created mm -hmm. and so it always the scriptures sometimes will do that they'll it'll make a it'll make a rough statement and it'll get into more of an explanatory uh concept of what actually happened mm -hmm. in that creation so when he said he created man and woman uh then it t tells us that he created woman out of the rib of the man. Mm -hmm. So that detail was taken out when he first said he created man and women. It wasn't added, yeah. but it was definitely there. But it was just mentioned, and then he, as time went on, he explained what happened when woman was created, mm -hmm. and then the purpose for them being created. So uh, it can get complicated sometimes, but if you look at the scriptures, you'll see that there's back and forth sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think you did a good job. So, anyways, I don't want to try to confuse myself any more than <laughs> I've already confused you. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, um, so, um, 
Exaltation means to elevate to a high status or position. This took place 40 days after his ascension and resurrection, which again took place sim simultaneously. There are two major elements of his ascension. The first is that he rose from the grave in victory vicariously, and second, to deliver his blood to the Holy of Holies for the redemption of humanity. During his ascension, Ephesians 4, 9 tells us, now that he ascended, what is it that... What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? So the phrase descended first is in reference to his burial through his death. So before he ascended, he descended where he ministered to the spirits that were in prison. That's in 1 Peter 3.19. And Ephesians 4.8, which we just read, tells mm -hmm. us that when he ascended, he led captivity captive, which is in reference to the spirits that were in prison. From this place of being exalted and seated at God the Father's right hand, he gave ministerial gifts to the church and the gift or baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's in Acts 2, uh, 33. Okay, uh, uh, what, I, what I want you to notice here is notice how, how Ephesians talks about uh, dissension and ascension mm -hmm. as if they happen simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But then when you get into, uh, I believe it's the Gospel of John, uh, then he starts talking about Mary, mm -hmm. and he says, "Don't touch me because I haven't yet ascended." Jesus right. said that. Mm -hmm. So notice that in John, more detail is added. Right. Detail that wasn't that was left out of this ascension, right. dissension, and ascension. Can you see that there was a lot that wasn't really addressed? Mm -hmm. Right. And but then when you find when you go through the scriptures, you're seeing, oh, there's something that took place in between these two events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened here. Right. So they appear to have happened uh, simultaneously, but yet there's evidence that something else happened in between that. Right. If you're going to follow a timeline. Right. Right. Um, so he was exalted or glorified and seated at the Father's right hand, which is a position reserved for the ascended Christ, our high priest. And we're going to read Acts 2.33-36. through 36. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed for this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And we'll read Hebrews 8, 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So the context of John 14, John chapters 14 through 16 is the introduction of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure and they will now need to be led by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They only need Jesus, they only needed Jesus up to that time. His death ensures were forgiven and set free from the power of sin. His burial was the final outcome of the consequence of sin and was the defeat of Satan and his cohorts once and for all. His resurrection is the revelation and reality of his victory over sin. Amen. And through his ascension, we enjoy his many ministerial roles as our high priest. His ascension does not mean that he immediately took place at the, at the, fa at the Father's right hand. That did not take place until after he was taken up into the clouds, then exalted, mm -hmm. being seated at God's right hand, and then glorified and acknowledged as our high priest. All of these events, including the ascension, brought us to Christ's position at God's right hand as a high priest, operating as 100% man and 100% God. It is, it is extremely crucial we understand that the high priest must be able to relate to both God and man. Because of that, he operates in both his humanity and his deity at God's right hand, which is one of the most exciting things that I think we've studied th through this time, is learning the importance of his humanity and his deity. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, the God-man, serves as a constant reminder of everything that was done to obtain our redemption. And mm -hmm. next, we're going to talk about his priestly ministry, which is his high being our high mm -hmm. priest. Uh, notice in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 33, it says, Therefore, being at the right hand of God, exalted. So, uh, uh, when you go, th when you look at Acts uh, chapter 2, I believe, it says the disciples seen Jesus being caught up into the clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, that is a Greek word that means to be taken up. Mm -hmm. He's caught up. He's just taken up into the clouds. Mm -hmm. Um, so 
He's taken up into the cloud. Part of this whole concept of, as, of ascension that the scripture portrays as things happening simultaneously actually have a timeline. But part of that ascension, part of that concept of ascension, there's a lot of things that lie within that timeline. Like his taking up of his blood, the deliverance of the saints that were in prison, the taking up of his blood, and uh, uh, him ascending up to his position uh, in with uh, uh, to his right hand of God, which when once he hit there, that was uh, the area of his exaltation mm -hmm. and glorification. Mm -hmm. So that was where, when you read uh, the Gospel of John, chapter what is that, uh, 17, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. it, it refers to he's praying. He said, "Take, uh, uh, put me back where I was. You know." Mm -hmm. Uh, where I had been, I forgot what the verse is or how it reads, but he basically says to put me back in the position I was before mm -hmm. I came down and took on a body. Um, he said he, uh, he's talking about being exalted back to the place that he was before. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about a place that he gets to rule and reign as our high priest. Amen. And that's important for us to understand. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, this is one of the hardest manuals. Or it was one of the hardest manuals to write because there's so much going on mm -hmm. that that the Bible mentions, but it doesn't really create a clear timeline for every little thing. Mm -hmm. But you can pick up other scriptures and you can see, oh, that fits in between this. Mm -hmm. That fits in between that. So you can notice in verse 24, David was not ascended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obviously, being him, him being caught up into the clouds to go up to heaven had to do something with that ascension. Mm -hmm. But there was more to it than that. Mm -hmm. because, because, because the angel said, or Jesus said, don't touch me because I haven't yet ascended. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's things in this concept of ascension that are not, that are not always mentioned as far as the timeline goes. Mm -hmm. So that you have to fit these different events within that certain timeline so that it can still be ascension. Yeah. yeah. So That's good. I hope I answered your question. As confusing <laughs> as that might have been for you. No, I thought you did great. I, I mean, the book is amazing. Uh, it's been a blessing and exciting to study. Um, next week, we'll hopefully um, get into Christ being our high priest mm -hmm. and his priestly ministry. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Where do we go from here after the priestly ministry? I haven't looked that far ahead. The offices and functions of Christ. The merciful and faithful high priest. Um, the events of the rapture. Mm. That's exciting. That's Love one of my favorite. We appreciate you guys. We thank you for joining us. Thank you, Pastor Walter. Sorry, were you going to say something? <laughs> we're right. done. I, I, got, you I got thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Have a blessed week. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breeze chms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.